So, that's her. Okay. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk, we gonna have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss Talk. We gonna do it how you want it. Boss Talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Boss Talk. It's a unique hustle. Boss Talk. Yeah, we came from the struggle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. What's up, baby? Well, go on, Madel. Well, hey, on. man. So today is special. You know, we um we started this podcast off trying to inspire people, and when we first started, it was crazy because you know we didn't really know what to expect because God has a way of revealing things to you as you go. Mm-hmm. You know, and we found a diamond in the sand. We found somebody that was in the family and around my family members that I didn't even realize was. And it, it, it was crazy. And I was like, we got to get on the show, man. Mm-hmm. So she has a book. You know, one of the one of the things about it that stick, sticks out, we've had so many people on here with books, but um, the ones we had wasn't motivational, uh, you know, speaking and delivering books, man. This book right here, Your Daily Ounce of Poker. Poker's in the house. What's up, baby? How y'all doing? Hey, what you, what you, what, what, what made you get into motivational speaking? Um, I don't think it was like one of my gifts. Really? I don't think it was something like, I just like, I want to speak, I want to speak. I found myself speaking. So it's like when you're called to do something, you just... People just come to you. They gravitate to you for that reason. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> you know, I am. Um, you know, I think I'm. I be motivating people when I be speaking too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got some. You know what I'm saying? I speak and motivate. I mean, I just ain't took it. <laughs> you know, I ain't took it to the stage yet. But yeah, we yeah. gonna get you there. Maybe I'm there now. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what these microphones were here for. They're built so that when we say something, it can magnify audiences and change circumstances and situations. And so that's the thing that I like about permeating ears with these mics is being able to touch people when you wouldn't have normally even been able to touch them. So we stream on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. So all of those platforms, and we're on YouTube, a lot of times on Instagram, and a lot of people are contacting, saying they want to be a part of the movement. So, you know, I guess I am motivating in a way. Sometimes people need to stay in their lane, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody ain't meant to be standing up on no stage either. (laughs) Some of them suck at motivational speaking. You've seen them go on the name drop. No, I don't have any names <laughs> I'm just to kidding. Drop. <laughs> but anyway, Steph, what, what do you think about it, uh, uh, Ms. Polka? What you're doing is amazing, but I want to know what inspired you to write this book. Okay, so um, every Wednesday on my platform, Polka Hunted, is my social media account on Instagram and uh, Snapchat and Twitter. And where did the name come from? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, let me do the first one. So... Poker honey, I used to run with a group of boys, and they used to call me A Money. But when I was growing up, my family called me Poker Hunters because of my hair. So we wound up putting the two together in middle school, and I've just been with it ever since. So everybody knows me as Poker. Um, was your hair longer than what it is now? <clears throat> no, it touched like almost my butt though. Oh, okay, okay, mm-hmm. okay. Wow. Um. So then, so every Wednesday I do Poker Speaks Wednesday, so people can ask me questions. Um, to ask me my opinion on topics or ask me what they should do in a situation. And this book was a way for them to contact me without me being there. So did a lot of people contact you on Wednesdays? Yes. Yes. I have a list. I just go down the list sometimes. Awesome. And this is on, where is this at? Instagram and Twitter. Oh, so you go live and just interact? No, I have them send me my t- the topics. Sometimes I do go live if they request me to. Yeah, because I think that's that's important to engage with the people. Your fans, that's literally what, you, what you're expressing. Mm-hmm. These are people who follow what you're doing, so they become your fans. So, yeah. I don't like to call them fans, though. Well, people, I'm sorry. They that's make what it they seem are. so negative now. What, fans? Yes. Like, I'm Why, because the OnlyFans page? No. You got one of them, too? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wait I'm just minute. trying to figure out which one we at. Because the fans, I mean, being a fan is, I don't see that as an issue, but I guess terminology Term- these days. Yeah, so the what younger, are you, a follower gen- now? What, what's this younger generation calling it? It is what it is. Oh, that's what they say? No, but, but, but I want to know why are they, I mean, how is it negative? Tell me about People it. People hate to follow. Like, you know, 
No, being a fan, not a yeah. follow, but a fan. But like a fan, but somebody has to follow you. So I'm not a follower. You know, there's gonna be the response. Support. Like, I, I, yeah, a supporter. I'm a supporter of you. A mentor. I'm a viewer of you. That's how they will look at it. But I do have people, you know, that I'm mentoring, and I do send support too. But I follow, get it. you know. I get it, but I think it's. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's just you. You have to be. I don't know how people look at things. For me, I ain't even a follow in that aspect. I'm gonna do things the way I feel to do them anyway. So I don't know. You know, I I would say, do you think a fan is a bad thing? No, I I personally don't because and I can be a fan of somebody. I'm not I'm not sitting down following them every step of the way. I'm not on their social media every single day looking and seeing what they're doing because I have my own life. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. But I'm still considering myself a fan of that person because I admire what they're doing. I admire their talent. And I would love to see them excel in what they're doing. And I think that's just a mature mindset because right now in these times, especially in my generation, I would say everybody just wants to be on top. So mm -hmm. anything that makes them feel like they're not, it's automatically a problem. So I just But it's a change of words. There's nothing new under the sun, just like the word gay. Back in the days, it was like gay mean you're happy. Mm -hmm. Now, you're scared to even use that word as being happy because they think it's something else. Exactly. So it's just a, recite, a cycle of people finding different words, how to turn it into something negative, and it's just going to keep going like that. It's, yeah. Correct. Who does Polka uh, list, like, uh, who does she listen to to get inspired sometimes? I actually do not listen to motivational speakers because I don't want... I don't ever want it to be a point in time where like, oh, she just studies what they say and repeat it back to me. Yeah. So I'm really, really close with God. Like I'm really close with God because one, I don't want to tell you anything wrong and then you come back to me and be like, well, you're the reason why. Like, no. So I try to make sure I'm right myself because I'll, give, I'll tell you I can't give you advice right now because I'm not in the right headspace. So you say you're really, really close with God. In my opinion, I would say yes. <laughs> so you're really, really close with God. Like you're really, really close. Like... Uh, I would say he hasn't failed me. Really close. You know what I'm saying? Like, you right next to him. Like, Jesus is right here. God is here. And you sitting right here beside them. I try to make sure you have a good, strong I'm relationship. asking, is, is, <laughs> how close are you? You know, um, I think it, it. that's a great statement, though. I love the way you express that you're really, really close with like, God. I try to be. Because at the end of the day, in order for you to be really, really close with God, <laughs> you have to drop off some baggage there has to be some things that you have went through and have given up in order to be really, really close with God. A lot of forgiveness. You have to be able to let everything go. Paul said, I counted it all as dung, meaning poop, manure. In order to get closer to God, he counted everything that he ever knew as nothing. Mm -hmm. And then he had to be reborn again. So in order to be really, really close with God, <laughs> you have to be born again okay but mm -hmm. my question to you is okay first of all how old are you i'm 21 that's okay. hot that's hot and at what age in your life did you build this relationship with god okay so i've always been involved in church but i feel like really knowing god for myself was around 16 17 years old okay and what situation you <clears throat> went through to stem that um closeness and relationship with him because normally in life people go through things and that's what pulls them closer to God. For sure. I wound up getting kicked out of one of the best schools in Dallas, Townview. Mm -hmm. And I was removed to go to North Dallas. I wound up getting there, graduating a year early, and I went to go to college. I went, I went to college. I was a first-generation college student. Didn't know what I was doing, how I was doing it. My mother had a stroke the day before my college classes happened. So I wound up taking care of her, my little sister, finding ways to pay my tuition, and that really got me close to God. Amen. Then my second semester, my father had a heart attack. Now, me and my daddy was beefed up at the time. But I realized with my mother that when I lose you, you're gone. So I feel like if I can come out here and work it out with a man or a little boy at that time, I can work it out with my father. Why not? He messed up just like everybody else do. So if you're here and I know that one day I will experience life without you or you're going to experience life without me, I might as well work on that while I can. And God helped me do that. And wow. is your dad still here? Yes. My daddy beat cancer twice. Wow. And then a heart attack just sealed it off. Wow. And then let me ask you a question. So were you still, did you finish college? Yes, I graduated. I love the fact that you did all of this and facing everything that you faced. Because a lot of people, even um, with the first thing you went through, would have given up school to go home and take care of the family. And the fact that you were able to manage all of that and not, how far was school from home? 
Uh, I went to Commerce. It was an hour and 15. Yeah. Now, with my mama's situation, I made it back in 45. Amen. Um, Amen. But I asked God. I said, God, I made it here. And this, this, was, this was me driving back to Parkland Hospital. I said, God, I made it here. I showed my people that we can make it here. Maybe this is all I need to do. At the time, I was working at Domino's. And my manager told me she was making, I think, 75 a year That's working high. at Domino's. That's mm-hmm. And she said, I'll give you my store. She said, you're one of my best employees. In two years, I'll give you my store. You make your schedule, do whatever. This was for my mother. I said, God, I can go back home, make a way for my family, even though it don't look like what I thought. When I walked in, when I walked in the hospital room, my mother was crying. She was talking like a toddler. The first thing she told me was, you're supposed to be at school. I broke down. I said, I'm going back. And I made a promise to my family. I said, if you guys tough it out for four years, I'll make sure you're never weary. After those four years up, you're never weary. Wow. And I've been keeping my promise. I love your spirit. I love that. You, 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 you're definitely an inspiration to every 21-year-old out there. For you to be able to do the things that you just, it's 30 Thank and 40-year-old people that don't even make the right decisions on the things that you just spoke on. And it's crazy to me that, that, that see, God is something else. He, he don't go by, see, he don't go by statue or none of that stuff. He goes by the heart. So there's a whole different level that people can be on. That's why I never went by your age and all that stuff when it comes down to spirituality. Because you can be a grown man and still be a baby, mm-hmm. or a grown woman mm-hmm. and still be a baby. Paul to called me, all those people babes in Christ. That's right, in chapter 3 of Corinthians. But the thing I got to say is this. You just you just showed me that maturity can come at a 21-year-old age where women are pretty much putting themselves out there in every other way. There are so many different outlets on social media streams. Sometimes I think a lot of times our women take the easy way out. Instead of them yeah. being able to step up to play, there are so many easy way outs that you can take, whether it be at the strip club, whether it be at the, uh, uh, at the somewhere doing massages and, and giving happy endings. There's all type of stuff that people can do and, and take the easy way out just because of looking like you. Mm-hmm. I'm being real. No, and, thank and, you. And, 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 and it, gets it says so much to your character for you to be able to step up. Because at, at your age... I was doing everything that a person could do at 21. And so that's you, what I tell my you are young very, girls. very, very, very different. And I admire you and thank you for coming here today. Thank you. But my next question, because I still want to go back into your state of mind at that point. Because a lot of people, you know, who is listening to this and hearing your story and they maybe have been going through the same things. But, you know, people always make excuses. Mm-hmm. So they'll look at you and say, yeah, but. I was worse off financially, or I was, you know, so how were you at that stage financially? So, I went to college with three bands in my bank account, working at Domino. She said three bands. Three I don't bands. know if you want that name. You know, three thousand. Three bands, you know, three bands. You know, she didn't say three thousand. She said three bands. If you have ten bands, that's ten thousand dollars. Three bands, that's three thousand dollars. I guess I'm showing where I'm from, huh? <laughs> Well, to bring both of y'all together, like, um, the easy way out was always offered to me. I'm a pretty girl in some eyes. So it was like, come be a bottle girl. And I'm 16, they DJs, men older than me. You know, they, a, Did they say come be a bottle girl? A bottle girl. That's what I'm talking okay, about. Shout okay. out to the bottle girls. For people, there, hold on, for so. people like me who have no clue <laughs> what, what a bottle what girl, bottle girl, girl is, is. <laughs> so, please tell me. So it's a waitress at the club. You know, you dress, you dress sexy, but it's like and you carry the things with the fire. With the go, fire, oh, you okay, know, gotcha. be the yeah. bottle girl, or I get offers. Work my door for me. But yeah. my thing was, I had to show girls because of that. I wanted to put on for girls who may not look as good as me, or may feel that like their body is not as as nice as mine. You know what I'm saying? Well, I don't have poker looks, so I could know because all the money I touched was clean money. And when girls tell me, well, I'm not you. Well, I just showed you how to do it without getting my hands dirty at all, without wow. taking any handout from a man. So wow. in college, I did have $3,000 save up, but I got that from working at Domino's, from going to school, taking 10 classes in high school in North Dallas and busting my behind at Domino's. So I bought my car and I saved up for college. When I got to college, yes, men wanted to pay for this. Yes, men wanted to pay for that. But while everybody was going to parties, I was stand up doing scholarships. Wow. I was finding resources. So wow. when I looked at my bank account at the end, I could still tell you that all my money came from me and God. Well, God allowed that to happen. Nothing came from a man and nothing was illegal or made me do anything so with my body. So did you get a scholarship? Yes. I didn't pay commerce a dime. And I had so much money left over that commerce is still paying for my master's degree. 
Wow. I'm not paying for nothing. Awesome. And I used to tell my daddy that riding the train to school, daddy, they going to pay me to go to college. They going to pay me to be in class. And that's what happened. I wound up traveling for free and everything. Awesome. You should turn that around and help. Because there's a lot of young kids now. I know there's resources because, like, my daughter, I'll tell her, we're not paying for your college. You better figure out how to pay for college and not actually working, actually getting a scholarship. Because there's so many scholarship money out there that you can get. You just have to find the niche of how to word your essays. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different scholarships that are out there that you need to say, okay, it's it's on this topic or it's on this topic. I'm a young black girl who is this, 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 or you just, you just have to know how to word stuff and what to get. Even you know with your I mean? city, the school, especially if you're in DISD. Do you DISD. help other young girls yes, try to? anybody reach out to me, even my older friends that's in college, that's mm -hmm. still in college now. They call me for fast for stuff. We have to apply for the government. Right. And I send, people people will send their, their friends, kids to me, and we look up the city that they're in. If you're in San Antonio, if you're in Houston, what is in your city? What's getting offered to you? Or your mm -hmm. school, what does your high school have to offer you? Mm -hmm. Because things are available just based off of where you are. Right, right. That's amazing. You always, And I love the fact that you're trying to give back. <clears throat> um, definitely, you said when people reach out to you, I would love to get your information more out there. Where can people find you again on social media? If, they, if you know, parents mm -hmm. would like to have you speak to their kids, do you ever think about going to school and talking to kids? So I do information on motivational speaking. Okay. So at pokaspeaks.com, P-O-K-A speaks.com, you can book me for one-on-one -on -one sessions. You can book me to go speak at a school or a college. I just spoke at SMU yesterday and yeah, did I a spoken word I piece. seen that. I seen that. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, I, like, I love the way how you're giving back. Well, I just love the, the fact that the age you're at and the, the moves you're making are, are, are just, man, they, they, they powerful. Thank you. And, and I think that's the most important thing I'm getting out today. You, you witnessing to me, and I'm old. I like the way you come across with what you think, you know. <laughs> I've been, I, I changed, so I understand change. A lot of people don't. And for you to make those changes early on, you you really putting it out there in a way that the masses need to hear it. The 21-year-old women and under, 18 to 21, boy, I tell you. That's, that's when you're vulnerable. Yeah, you're vulnerable. very vulnerable. And you're still in school right now. I'm getting my master's degree right now. Okay. I'm finally free on May the first. First semester wow. down. Awesome. Shout out to the girl so, who's getting a master named Poker. What do you what do you say to yeah. the person that um don't have three thousand dollars in their bank account and want to go to college? Go get the three thousand dollars and get it in the <laughs> bank account. Hey, well, I know what to tell them. I mean like is it still possible for that it's person? Definitely possible. Do and get, what options do you think that they have? it depends on where you come from. Like I said, uh, the city. So when you are first generation college students, there are resources on campus. They want numbers there. Where you can, your background matters, your race matters. When you get on campus, they have resources there for you to apply for. Scholarship service for you to apply for on campus. Your high school, they have stuff for you there. Just by you being part of the ISD, if you're part of the ISD. Wow. So just figure out, where you, reach out. I'm gonna help you the best way I can, I promise you. Cause somebody reached out and helped me. They had EIF, which is Education is Freedom on my campus at North Dallas. When I met Ms. Burns, that was her name, she was just a person over that. She changed my life forever, and I tell her that you changed my life forever because you seen something in me. You wow. was there. So is there anybody else in your family that motivational speaks or anything like that? No. Or are they all younger than you? No. The, the, your siblings? Your, the... I have an older brother. Okay. We don't really speak like that. Okay. God is working on me. Okay. Um, I have a little sister. And I but you, 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 you know, you right there next to God. So you, all you got to do is ask him. I'm a, <laughs> tap him on the shoulder. You got to be, you got to be on the shoulder. <laughs> you got to receive it though. You yeah, know yeah, yeah. You say you was, you say you, you was right next to him. So, you know, you, you right there. So I keep it cordial. Well, I, I, you know, but just getting back to that, you know, that's normal. I mean, I have family members right in the room with me, maybe now that <laughs> I don't really see eye to eye sometime with. So. You know, um, you know, this is something that happens, <laughs> and you have to learn to sail above all of the bull crap that <laughs> comes around. And and you know, and in due time, God will make it to where everything will be okay. In due time, yeah. Even my little sister, though, that's the one I really. Do. My little sister, and my niece. How old, is, how old is your sister? She is sixteen. Woo. Okay. At that stage, she ain't like you, is she? I can tell the way you look. She my baby, and we're gonna get through you it. Trying to work with her. She gonna, we gonna get through it. I promise. You. Well, I think, like I said, with, with you being an example, because you, the little sister, does somewhat look up to the older sister. Now, sometimes it can become a rebellion thing as well, just because of the way that everybody's looking at you and saying, hey, you're and doing a great job. And she don't really mm -hmm. want to even do that. She could twerk and get the followers you got. You, you know see what I'm saying? saying? 
You know, it's she, real it, though. It's easy. And she think. She think she had me charging up people, but she got Slim a baby too. Pig. She no. got a baby already. She got a baby. And but the thing is, she looks up to me, and I'm happy. There's no envy in it. Yeah, cause you didn't, you didn't, you didn't do. You you was there for her when she had the baby. I was. That's what's up. I mean, I, I was told like we got we got to set some things in line, but whatever you do, we got to rock out with it. We like. got to rock with it. It's life. Life has a way of tapping you on the shoulder and telling you what <laughs> you're gonna do. You know, it, it, that's the way life is. Life is something else. It it brings uh, so many different things when it comes down to trying to live through life, right? Mm -hmm. So, or live in this life. You know, you got to really think about how how challenging it can be, you know, for, for those young kids. You go to Skyline and all those different places. They say Skyline, everybody pregnant up there a lot of times. I'm talking about if certain schools got a bad rep for the youngsters getting pregnant. I seen a girl, me and my daughter was uh, <coughs> going to school uh, I was taking, she was driving. You know how we used to drive to school? And mm -hmm. she said, she pregnant, Daddy. I'm like, really? They used to call Pinkston, let's get pregnant. Yeah. But I feel like we go in school system and preach no sex. You know these kids having sex. Yeah. Give them condoms. Exactly. You know they black kids. Give them bigger condoms. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on yeah. now, be for real. You know it's going to happen. So tell them. Right. Tell them what clinics to go to. And I'm going to be honest with you. But then they have sex ed education and they don't they give out condoms in school? They do. They give out kids lifestyle condoms, though. Mm. And I was the, and I'm gonna tell you something. I walked in at the age of 16 and put myself on birth control. My mom, I, I went out my mama, and she walked in. And she said, "What's that on your arm?" I said, "A rabies shot." <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't want to get caught up. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I was mature enough to know I can't afford that. <laughs> I didn't know you yeah. can do that by yourself without permission. They can't. And you know what? Birth control. I feel like in my heart is designed to kill us because mm -hmm. when I told them I didn't want it, she told me, "You showed up. You gotta get it." What? You gonna give me free medicine in America? Something is a problem. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people in today's society, I know of so many women who have been taking birth controls for years, and as they get older, they have a lot of internal problems mm -hmm. because of that. Um, because any medication to me that is des designed have side effects, and they don't tell you about. It's like we only look at what is what it's preventing at this moment, but mm -hmm. you're not looking at all of the things that can cause problems later on in life. And as we get older, we're like, oh, we have this, we have that, and not realize it's caused because of all the years you've been taking that birth control. Mm -hmm. One of my friends and I realized when we was on basket, we was on a basketball team in high school that parts of our body would go numb. My leg went numb for a month. And they took me to Baylor and all the top specialists couldn't figure out what happened. She used to shoot basketball and her left hand would go numb. Mm -hmm. We in high school. She's like, my hand going numb. Yeah, well, let me let me see the cover of that book. Kind of hold it up. No, you hold it up. <laughs> Ain't my so book. It's there it book. is over there. There you go. Look. There you go. Yeah, they see it just fine. Yeah. So this book right here, let's get into it. Um, what, what made you write a book? Who do you think you are? I'm only what God allows. Okay, that's good. <laughs> so, so what made you write a book, and what is the book about? Okay, so it's a motivational book. Um, like I said, it was just a way for my viewers to uh, have a piece of me without me always being there. Um, and then I said I was going to do it, and why not? Yeah. I'm 21. That's hard. This is the time to fail. You know what I'm saying? I have no kids depending on me. That's hard. You know, my family depend on me here and there, but if you're going to do it, do it. And I feel like the times when we want to do something and we don't, we often see other people wind up doing it because we were stagnant or we were scared to move on that. So right. God had to give it to somebody else. How long did it take you to write the book? I wrote the book, uh, it took me a year. A year to write I wrote book. for every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long uh, did it take you to publish it? About two to three months. Really? Oh, that's how, are you self-published? Yes. But that, is that typically how long it takes? I have no idea. Okay, Honestly, it just took you, you, how much did it cost you to self-publish? <clears throat> <laughs> $2,300. Wow. Is that typically how much it costs? Or did you get screwed? Because somebody probably screwed you. They seen you coming a mile away. Well, let me tell you this. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, you, did, your, you did your on, research on I it before screwed. you did it. Yes, I did. But, but when I went to other... Talk about it. It's when coming. I, when I went to <laughs> other places, such as Amazon, I was like, no, you get too much of my profit. Right. If it's my book and I'm going to take my risk, I'm going to go stand at the venue tables. I'm going to go stand there and I'm going to go sell my book. You know, I'm not going to just let you do that. How much profit does Amazon want to take? I think around 40% of sales. Really? Oh, I didn't yeah. think it was that I high. Just, you I sure know, you I just made, didn't write, make, make, you know, well, I, when big, I, deep when enough? I, when I made my decision, I made my decision. So with my... You didn't go into it too much after that. Yeah, like because I have a cousin that have two of her books on Amazon. On Amazon. My cousin so has his book on Amazon. Yeah, I got to go check and see so how much when, it... And I was asking around all okay. the black authors. I'm like, where did you go? Where did you go? I want to help. 
You know, I was a sponge. I want to soak up everything. And after going through what I went through with the book and my choices, I was like, I'm going to self-publish it. And I wanted a heart. And a lot of things made my decision, too, because I wanted a hard cover. And I wanted a certain type How of much texture. more is a hard cover than just a uh, paperback? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's Let's, well, how much? probably about $10, $15. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how much do you sell your book for? My book is $24.99. I thought you told me 32 the other day. But you can give me 32. <laughs> I told you 27, but if you want to tell me, you know. Oh, no, I'm not going to tell you. I'm just saying. I mean, no, okay, because I know I that. Will, I might buy two. I don't know. Because I, I know a lot of people on um, Amazon that I know they're selling their books. They're not hardcover. They are paperback. Yes, and some of the options are not available for me. Because me, I want it to be that thing that you point you know, your kid getting on your nerves. And you're like, go get that book off that coffee So I can hit you over the head with it. No. <laughs> so, so I can get some motivation for I keep you, for real. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, so what What do people, what's the the most, cr the the craziest thing that you, you've heard somebody come back and say, or the most touching thing that you've heard somebody come back and say after they read your book? Um, I wind up gifting my book to a lady that does, um, sex work and okay. i didn't know that and when i gave it to her she read her birthday she broke down crying wow and i said you ain't got to tell me baby it ain't meant for me to know my job was to give it to you i don't know why but wow. i did wow. and, and I, that was between her and god and wow. i was like all right because there's two prayers in the book um i don't know them by heart anymore it's okay. but i asked god for guidance when writing this book and giving the words that's going to lead his people for decades to come so at that moment when she read and got what she needed I stepped out the way. Wow. And let God work, because that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. And I found out after the fact that, you know, she was involved in sex work, and I was like, well, I don't even know what the quote said. Just, so be it. How long ago did you write that book? Every oh, It came out in December. December? To start the okay. new year off. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. Wow. So how has the sales been going for you? It's been going good. I've been excited. Good. Yeah, I know it. I can tell all them books you're selling, you're making, yeah, we can do something together. I'm going to rock with you. <laughs> I'll go into business with you How on many some. did you have printed? 125. Let's go. How many do you have left? I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. So they come out of a warehouse? Yes. So my self publishes 48 hour books. They uh, published the book there and sent it straight to me. When you first finished the book, how long did it take you to get the first copy back to you after you got it published? Uh, about three days. That's hot. Mm -hmm. About three days. So did anybody help you like to? Um, lay it out the way you wanted it laid out or you did every single thing by yourself? I didn't do it. You, you never do everything That's single right. thing by yourself. I wore this logo for a year before I put it on my book. And when I put it on my book, I was scared. I was calling everybody. I was crying. I'm like, it looks like a girl. It's not going to sell. No man is going to buy my book. Men wear this shirt, this logo on shirts and clubs. But do you have a, uh, a shirt is with that, that logo? Yeah, yeah, I was about yes, to I, have, I sell shirts and mugs with it. With that logo. Not. So mm -hmm. is that logo trademarked to what you? What a dang shirt said. I did. They, they in my trunk, actually, because I just left an event on yesterday. Bro, you tripping. And didn't even bring it in. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm kind you of feeling disrespected, You want me to do a whole set-up shot? Yeah, yeah, that's, set up that's, shot. Yes, that's what that's, we, that's, we doing. What you think we here for? You think we somebody to play with? We ain't nobody to play with. I mean, you follow me Same on Instagram, so you see what be going on. No, I don't on. know what be going on. But our, our listeners like that. don't. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. But yes, they come with shirts and mugs. So is it trademarked, though, that symbol? Uh, No, it's not. Okay. Mm -mm. Why didn't you? Really, money. You, yeah. if you can cut costs, cut costs. I know the guy who made the made the thing. I paid him for it. We got that in writing. He knows it's mine. Somebody want to steal it? Nah. Thank God be the Lord. Oh, really, man. <laughs> so I know that um, when he asked you the question earlier about who was your inspiration um, in being a motivational speaker, did you take inspiration for someone? I know that you went strictly to like the bigger people and I was actually thinking about maybe in your life, did anybody in your life, as in your mom, your dad, your brother, anybody that was close to you, or it could even be a stranger that you spoke to one time and say, you know what, you need to really tell your story. I could say the one person that had the biggest impact on me was my grandmother. She was never really, she's, never, she's not blood, but she raised over 22 kids and she passed away in 98. She somehow always had the answers without saying anything at all. And that always stuck out to me. But growing up when I was young, I remember my brother had this girlfriend and we was on the couch and she said, you're going to be really big. You remind me of Oprah. She said, you're so smart and your words don't sound like a young kid. And that stuck with me as I got older. So I always tried to pick and choose my words wisely. And my daddy get on me at that all the time. Baby, say what you mean. I mean what you say. And I'm like, daddy, I'm trying, but I'm hard. It's hard right now. But yeah, definitely my grandmother. But it's so crazy because... The way how you talk, you you would people will get the impression that you seem like you have it all together. And I don't. 
I don't. I cry in the shower. I wake up and don't want to do it. And I tell my listeners that, like, hey, when you ask me for something, let me know. I only talk to you and speak the words I'm speaking to you because I'm really talking to myself. I had to go through something. And that's the only way I'm able to tell you what to go through. It's so funny the way how you just said that because I've told, like, when I'm talking about God to people, and I tell people all the time, I said, I'm speaking to you about God, about my experiences and all of that. Not necessarily for you. If you take something from it, that's great. But they don't realize that the more you speak about God is the more it helps you to walk straight because if you're not talking about him, your mind, the devil can sneak in in so many other ways and have you doing other things that are not godly. Yes. You know what I mean? So a lot of times I tell people all the time, I said, if you can spread a message, talk whatever you are learning. Like I have friends that read and they say that they forget about whatever they're reading. I said, because you didn't call somebody and say, hey, guess what I just read? Mm -hmm. You know, you have to talk about, for it to stay in your mind, you have to keep using what you've learned and keep talking about it. So just like what you're saying, you're giving advice and you're talking to people. It's helping you to keep on a straight and narrow. Yes. And I also try to make it intentional that I talk about God every day. Let me just, let me just cut in. <laughs> you know, something you said earlier is that you don't have it all together. I don't. The people who you think got it all together don't have it all together. I don't think anybody has it all together. To be honest with you, until you arrive really and be sitting on the right hand side of the Father, then with Jesus, then you, I don't think, I think we're, we're all a work in progress. So I wouldn't ever, you never look at everybody else and even judge yourself at all because they messed up, girl. They just might be hiding it better than mm -hmm. you. Everybody has a thing. Everybody in this room right here, everybody that you meet have a thing that they got going on and they don't want to tell nobody about it. But if it starts to come out, they feel so embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So I never get excited over people and, and the moves that they make and the way that they facade around, especially when they become self-righteous or egotistic because I know already that they're hiding something. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us as followers of Christ to be able to understand how to spiritually discern and be able to keep focus when all this stuff is going on. And in meanwhile, help others. That's our mission is to help everybody. That That's why you wrote this book. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that's what God does the most. He blesses those who blesses others. He told Abraham, he says that I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That you, you're you the father of many nations. So you have to understand that God has a purpose and a plan for your life and he will get it out of you. As long as you stay so close to him, how you are. You say you're close to him, right? We be definitely right there next to him, right? Okay, I just want to make sure because I should have seen you already. That's how you supposed to walk with him, Danny. I hadn't seen over there by him. I'd be by him too, so I'm trying to figure out why. Where she at? He's so big. He's so everywhere. Okay, omnipotent. Yeah, but it's definitely a great thing to see the way that you are basically handling yourself. Like I said, the book it says volumes. The fact that your father had a heart attack and cancer beaten twice and your mother going through the thing with the stroke, as you said, mm -hmm. you know, uh, these are things that a lot of people get taken out by. You know, my mom, she uh she passed away with cancer at very young age in her forties, forty four. And uh my brother, I don't think he ever my younger brother ever, ever recovered for that or healed from that. And all after that things other things started to pound up against him as well. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't heal from that. I mean, six months later I was facing life. And at the end of the day, it, it was some things I had to let go. But I think it was God's way of opening my eyes mm -hmm. when I had to deal with things head first like that without family members or anyone else being involved. So I think that stretched me to a whole nother level and a lot of times people be trying to get on my level but you can't because you ain't been where I've been. Okay. And you ain't never been through what I've been through. And they through. not willing to do. You talk about you cried in the shower. Try crying in the shower when 24 other men are in the same room with you and you have to cry low. Mm. <laughs> yeah, gel ain't for me. I don't look good in orange, baby. So all, all I'm saying is, but, but at the end of the day it was it was crying and leading at the same time. I'm a leader so anywhere I go I lead. It don't matter who I'm in the presence of. So if you know that, then you, you, you know, but I still had to understand how to change in the midst of a people who you had to be strong and practice machismoism in front of. And that's good. But I was able to convert and I was <laughs> able to help others and I was able to start different prayer meetings and different teach at different teach five and six hundred men. I, I, okay, I, Bishop. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can call it what you want. I don't really go by title because title and position doesn't guarantee productivity. I was productivity. about to say, why you got to give somebody me, a title? Did, did I just say that? I said title and position don't guarantee productivity. You can have all the titles in the world. <laughs> you can have more degrees than a thermometer and you can still be weak. I like that. Oh, you're going to love me if oh, you just stay here Lord. a little longer. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> but it's true. You know, I, everything I spit is real. I don't know what these other cats doing because I don't be hanging with them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, I mean, I just love the way that you, I, I mean, my brother had already warned me. He said, you're going to love this girl. <laughs> and he was right. You know what I'm saying? I really like what, what what's happening with you. And, and, and like I said, I'm going to definitely be, uh, I want you to, I need your help. So, you know, I can, I mean, I got a little bit of change, a little cheddar to make things better. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to figure my little old situation out. And I can use you and help you. Maybe you can put some money in your pocket. So that's the way it go down. When God bless and he just Everywhere. Shoot all through the room, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think you could tell that young person? Not your sister, not your cousin, your brother, but the girl that's pretty much right now don't have nobody to go to, and and she's fifteen, and her father is is sexually abusing her. Yeah, what what do what do you say to that? I mean, how do you are are basically she's uh, pregnant and can't tell nobody, or you know, there's so many different scenarios. You're right. What What would you say to these young people who are going through the struggle? Going through, especially sexual abuse, I would definitely say this. I'm gonna say this to my men too. It's not your fault. Wow. It's not your fault because I used to say that. Like maybe if I was no, like I had to look myself in the mirror, baby girl, it wasn't your fault. It's not your fault. And in those times, people heal differently. But when somebody going through a time like that. I would definitely say keep that in the back of your mind. You yeah. say you used to say that um, to yourself. Is it you've been through sexual abuse? Yes. Wow. Yes, and I and I feel like when women, it's so quick. Like, how long did you go we through it before know. you actually um, talked about it? I mean, ooh. because a lot of times people always hold that in and not talk about it. Or like Archivia said, we had shout out Archivia. He could, he was on here. A, uh, about uh, three weeks ago and he was molested four times before he was 11 years old mm -hmm. and um, by by people in his family. And, both men and women. Yeah, mm -hmm. both men and women. And I watched the beginning. You've seen it? Yeah. yeah, that's my guy right there. And um, he's able to share his story, but the pain is gone because of the fact that he's been healed. healed. And you don't see him acting out or breaking down in the midst of him explaining it because he feels like he's been healed and he talks and tells people all over the nation and, and, and just about his story. And he works on 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 his platform daily. So I know that he's consistent with trying to help others. And, and so, you know, I said that to say, you know, this guy, man, you know, I think people like you, people like him, you know, you have to be able to tell your story, but you have to be able to heal, mm -hmm. you know, because everybody got to have healing and time to under and talking about things. It helps. You know, a lot of people like to go to counseling. Y'all, y'all always tell y'all this, but God is my counselor. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. I'm not a fan of that. Listen, listen, you're not a fan of it. You don't no. think God can counsel you? No, I'm saying I'm not a fan of going to counseling. Yeah. I don't knock yeah. it, though. No, I just think the Holy Spirit, the Bible says God is your counselor, so I really believe it. And I don't know all about all these counselors, what they believe in or what they're doing. So I don't know. You might well go get you a soup sale or something. I'm just saying, you know, you. I mean, I'm being real. I mean, it, who is this that talking to you about what and how? To, because they got an education. There's people with educations that 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 do a lot of different stuff. All I'm saying is, you got an education. I don't trust you yet. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yet. Okay. <laughs> so how old were you when you were when you went through abuse? So the first time I remember. Oh, that was two times. A couple Multiple. of times. Okay. The first time I remember, um, it comes back like a flashback. Like I remember what I had on. I remember everything about it. But I never questioned him because it was blood. Um, and I know if I ever find out the truth, which I know it's, gonna, it's a little. You so know. your mind blocks it? Yeah, my mind blocks it. But I know if I ever find out he was circumcised or not, would tell me if he did it because I was so young. Um, after that time, I, I was four. After that time, from 7 to 11, I was messed with by um, my mother's girlfriend's son. Wow. And I never. How old was he? I was 17. He was uh, 14. He was 14? Uh-huh. And because I know my mother don't listen to this podcast, I'm going to say that. Um, she didn't know that somebody messed with me because my mother had a hard, hard childhood. And that will break her. That's but crazy. He was even 14? Today, mm -hmm. He was younger than you? No, I was seven. He was 14. Oh, he, oh. oh I thought sorry. you said you were 17. I'm so sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. No, I was seven. He was 14. But I wound up telling my mother in a heated moment. Wow. Oh, so you, you know? finally told her? Yeah, because I thought I wasn't going to tell her until she died. I wasn't going to say nothing until she died. But I wind up telling her in the heat of the moment. I'm like, Mama, because there's so many times where kids want to say something and we can't in the black community. Was he still around? Is he still around to this day? Uh, I have seen him since I've been of age, around 15. Um, and I just I just locked up. I was on a train station. I was like, oh, my God. And I just locked up. But now, you know, I pray for him. 
Oh, yeah. I pray for him. That's how you're supposed to do. But, yeah, my mother, I was like, Mama, you need to stop putting people in our lives that we don't know because you don't know their true intentions with us. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, just know that because you love hard, people hurt us sometimes. Yeah. And you told her, and what did she say about I what? never went in detail with it. She doesn't know. She don't oh, know she who does. did. No. But um, she knew you were abused. Yeah. And it broke her a little bit because, you know, her past. She didn't want her girls to experience what she experienced. But my man happened. Wow. You know, it, it's funny. You know, we talk about the the, the abuse and, and the people. All the people that, and, and we so quick as our culture, black people, we, we'll, we'll counsel people out or whatever. Talk That guy that you're talking about, and I'm not trying to take up for him or, or anybody, any girl that did it to a guy, whatever, but black culture has been through so much. I'm telling you, on a whole, you have to get, you have to, you have to level up to understand it. They do it, what they it, see? Is no, that what yeah, you're trying to say? They've been abused from their ancestry and, and everything we, else. And we make excuses for it. Yeah. That's like, what, don't, mm -hmm. go, don't go in Unk room. You already know what Unk no, 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 doing. No, 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 no. The thing is, I'm just telling you, the whole culture needs healing. And and, they, and it's, a, it's a big thing. It's not just a small thing. And it's not just a you thing. It's mm -hmm. not just a me thing. It's, it's not just a you thing. It's, the whole culture has issues and nobody had they you hear black people talk about it all the time from Robert Smith to all these people trying to get your reparations and all this stuff. Do you not realize that the slavery and all that stuff that you your ancestors went through this has been passed down to you? Genealogies, what we study about on the Bible. Why do you think it talks about genealogies? It tells you about the people that you come from and it tells you about your history for a reason. Mm -hmm. So why does it not affect you, but it was something that Jesus then was privy to. It was something that people looked at from the old times. It's something that people value in that's not in your culture. The your 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 white people white constituencies or, or Asians, they care about where they came from. But we so quick to try to say, oh yeah, that was them though. We you know, we ain't that way no more. Now no. It's a it's a healing process. Yeah, one of my classes I want to research in uh the his, uh, some history and it was told that actually can be trauma can be passed down through your DNA. Listen, I didn't even know that they found that. I with the, read uh, books where a kid was cut out a woman's stomach at eight at eight months, and the kid cried one time, and the white slave master smashed his head. And y'all think you can just go on and act like this stuff don't affect generations to come? As you see, your people have been pretty much just in oppression. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's something that people need to wake up to, and they don't. They always trying to act like, oh, no, we good. Just because the, the people that don't look like you done gave you a small opportunity and you got a little car. If you don't go sit down somewhere and try to get yourself together. And it can be gone tomorrow. But it goes even on the flip side. The flip side is a lot of times we live our lives for ourselves. We're not thinking about the future or future generations mm -hmm. to come and so forth. So even when we do things that are good, we're preparing our lives for our, even our children. We need to look past just preparing for our children. We need to prepare for our, our children, children and children, children. That's right. and future to come because if mentally certain things can affect us from generations past till now, if we flip it and, t and change that cycle for good, try to put that goodness going down from generations to come. Mm -hmm. So we need to also flip it and try to think about not just our generation, but generations to come. Yes. You know I, what I mean? I definitely agree with you. I think the main thing we got to do is keep on praying for our people, man. So I had another question, though. Babe. Go ahead. So um, with all the things that you've been through, how is your love life? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, I go different places with different people and do different things. I'm old school dating <laughs> to see who I like. But I'm, I'm going to say this, and this may come out a little harsh, but I intimidate a lot of men my age, and I really try, try not to. I don't care what you do. You know what? As long as it's, don't put me in harm's way, you can work at Taco Bell. Be the best Taco Bell person you can be. But my thing is people see that I got a degree. People see that I did this and I did that, and they think they're not good enough for me. Well, I want you just the way God wants you, and I want you to be sent from God. So when dating around, I attract a lot of older men. And then when I do talk to men my age, they're intimidated by me a lot of times. Well, I think, uh, hey, man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. You need to pray, and you need to, you need to, God will send whoever is going to come your way. You know, I think you shouldn't even get caught up in the, their the way that they react and all that, you yeah. know, because at the end of the day, you have to be making yourself available, but be chaste. You but know what I mean? But the reason why I asked that question, babe, was because 
You know, a lot of people, when they go through abuse and certain things as a younger child, it affects their relationships as no, they get older. Definitely. The but way she how said they, she close to God. Right. The way, but you know what? A lot of people say that. But they don't. I'm not saying you. No, you but I'm just saying a lot of people say that they're close to God. Or a lot of people say they go to church every day, but still can't deal with a man touching them because of things that they've been through, they haven't forgiven, they haven't passed mm -hmm. over that hump mm -hmm. to be able to move on with somebody else. So the reason why I'm saying this too, because I know that you are giving out advice and talking to many people out there and people are gonna be like, how you can be, you know, giving us advice, but your life is a mess. I love the fact that you talk, you spoke on that. So look, um, being, being messed with did hurt me. It hurt me a lot. And what happens is because you gain that experience, it's still experience. So you become good at what you do. Well, the thing I can say so, is you, 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 de go ahead. Okay. Go so ahead. you come to get what you do. So you start getting involved. So I started having sex around 15. Oh, and you OG. I'm going to say all that. <laughs> <laughs> I started having sex at 15. And as I got closer with my, my father, I started picking up my brothers and I seen men that really loved me, respect me and cared about me. I realized there's certain things that men that love you don't do. So when I was... So before that, you didn't really have your father in your life. My, my daddy was there. Don't get me okay. wrong. I just started getting close. But we, my mom and daddy's girl. You tell me, no, I'm mad at you. I'm slamming the door. It's mm -hmm. a wrap. But around the age, well, how old was I? I was 19. At 19, I was fed up. I said, I'm sick and tired of this. So I dedicated a year of no sex. No sex. I went, a year with, I went over a year with no sex. And that happened, actually, my, uh, I was done in August. And I just kept going a little bit more. And then I started back in uh, January. Oh, and so then you I found again. somebody. You found somebody. Man, like, I stopped so quick. I'm back to the basics. Start over again. Well, like I said, you know. I um, actually just lost my ring last night. You? Oh, you had a promise ring or something? To myself. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, it says poker, I promise inside. And um, it was just telling, like, the little girl me, like, you promised to make up for me. Wow. You know, you have to be that person that we need. So I kept it on me. I think you the the way you express yourself and the way the things that you're saying I, I think are just people you you're speaking on a whole lot of different things because a lot of different challenges come with 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 growing up as a human not, not just a woman or a man everybody go through different things where different things challenging you're challenging your 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 flesh when you fast to sex that's something you have to do Gandhi used to challenge himself to not speaking you know for period of time and, and his wife everybody at the house he just wouldn't talk for maybe a week you know maybe two weeks you know it's certain things that you challenge your flesh that's what fasting whatever is you about. do too much of yeah yeah mm -hmm. you, you you challenge yourself if you're on the phone you say i'm not going to use this phone for a week or two i'm going to hold back you know it's certain things that people do that's just an example no no, no. you i'm like but, you, but right? you have to challenge yourself on every level to be a better in a, individual in this universe and i think that's something that's important i think everybody should do it um anything else <laughs> no i think that's it for now babe. yeah her. well i mean you know like i said um i would ask you about the top three uh artists of all time but that's not what this is um i would say that people need to go out and purchase this book and if y'all see her you can get it from Boss Talk, too, because I'm going to have about one or two. I'm going to start flipping them. She charged 24 I charged 38 You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? We in a store. So at the end of the or day. any merchandise, because she says she does have cups well, and Well, we don't shirts. know. We don't know. She didn't bring them in, so I don't can, know. Do you have a website that they can find this merchandise on? Yes, pokerspeaks.com. If you go to the store, all my merchandise is there. And then also my booking opportunities are there, too. So I do MC service, Better Me sessions, one-on-ones. You have an organization you want me to bond with. I create workshops for you guys, circles, a whole bunch of stuff. That's hot. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Say, man, and, and at any time you have anything that you need our help with, you make sure you get a hold to me. I will. Um, and if there's something you need me to come speak to some young brothers about or some young sisters, I'm, hey, I'm always ready to speak. Okay. The Bible says be instant in season and out of season. That means I speak whenever. <laughs> and any charities, because I see you doing... I can see you creating your own charity. I'm looking to do that with to, somebody. Um, to help others. I can see that. So I have one in the works. Okay. So when I was in college, my sophomore year, after I did all that with my, my parents, I created an organization that teach college kids how to cook, how to sell foul taxes, build credit, buy homes. Wow. So they're functioning in commerce now. Um, 
And what was the name of the charity? Hocus Practice. Okay. It was an LLC because I, did, I was young. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want to do a nonprofit. Nonprofit. And, and it messed it up. So as we speak, I'm learning how to transform that LLC to a nonprofit. And hopefully, y'all see me around at the but college. But couldn't so. you create a nonprofit under the LLC? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I I'm believe learning. So. Okay. Yeah, you can. I'm learning. Okay. Well, but yeah, I fully want to change it, though, because I want that to be solely nonprofit. But hopefully, I'm at different universities and we do stuff in the community. Like, uh, we. Uh, adopt a nursing home with my church and gave them Christmas trees during COVID. Oh, mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I like that. But yeah, I can it, I, just looking at you and hearing you speak, I, I knew that had to be coming. <laughs> yes. So I could tell. Well, but hey. Definitely. Let us know how we can help. Thank and you. We'd love to join with um, people who are doing good in the community. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, I got I got a bag for that. Yeah. I, she said three bands. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking I got a bag. You can double that. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can triple that actually. I'm that man. You okay. know what I'm saying? Instead, I ain't trying to brag. That I'm going to hold you to you it. For everything that you ever done for me, God. <laughs> I'm not trying to sit here and be all like how to you, act like I'm higher than everybody. I am just a regular dude. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about, about somebody, somebody who can save anybody. Body. Yeah, that's me. You know, so thank you for coming on the show. Thank y'all for We wish me. you so much love, so much success. Thank you. And we just, we, hey, we're going to be watching your moves. And, and <laughs> before the end of this year, I am going to do a little something for all of my motivational people. You know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I know you know already mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. I'm just going to be watching y'all moves. And then when I figure it out, I'm going to bless you. Hey, man, it's a unique hustle. Boss Talk 101. And we out. Okay.